Good evening, everybody. My name is Kim Adler. I am the COO here at the Jewish Federation of Sarasota Manatee. And I want to thank you, first of all, for joining us tonight for the Keeping SRQ Safe Town Hall. Um, I will be moderating tonight and uh, helping to, uh, to monitor the Q&A as well. Um, just to give you an idea of the format, first of all, we are in what's called webinar format on Zoom. So tonight you'll only be seeing the people who are participating on the panel. You won't be seeing each other. Um, and when you do have a question, you're welcome to put that into the chat, which is down on the toolbar at the bottom. And we'll be monitoring those questions throughout the presentations. And at the end, after all of our panelists have had an opportunity to make their presentations, we'll have a Q&A session and hopefully we'll be able to get to as many questions as possible. So uh, with that, again, thank you so much for joining us. And I'd like to introduce our first speaker, which is Randon Carvel, the Federation President. Randon. Good evening. Happy Hanukkah. And I want to be among the first to wish each of you a very happy, healthy, and safe 2021. My name is Randon Carvel. And I'm proud to serve as the president of the Jewish Federation of Sarasota Manatee. Our federation is committed to helping to provide an enriching and safe experience for all who choose to participate in Jewish community activities. Serving such a growing and diverse Jewish community brings its own set of security challenges. The October Homeland Security Threats Report indicated that white supremacist were the number one threat to the U.S. And locally, our Sarasota Manatee community has been victim to an increasing number of anti-Semitic acts of violence during this past summer. So security is a vital topic of our Federation's focus. No one can predict where and when the next incident will take place. However, we have to make all necessary preparations to smartly protect our community. Our Federation, in partnership with the Secure Community Network, is at the center of a security-based planning body of all Jewish institutions in Sarasota Manatee. By working together, we centralize security planning, offer assessments, training, resources, and create a security shield to protect our Jewish community. It's through the Secure Community Network we were able to find and hire Jeff Solomon, our Jewish Community Security Director, who you will hear from shortly. Security awareness is our new reality, and it is one of the primary responsibilities of our Jewish Federation to provide protection to our institutions and individuals in any way possible. It is now my pleasure to introduce Howard Tevlowitz, our Federation's CEO. Thank you. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. And again, thank you for being here tonight. With the rapid growth of our Sarasota Manatee Jewish community, the role of leadership is more critical than ever before. My message from the leadership and on behalf of the leadership of our Jewish Federation is very simple. Security is our top priority. And on that note, thankfully, we've joined with our friends at the Secure Community Network. And it's my pleasure to introduce Michael Masters. Michael Masters is the National Director and CEO of the Secure Community Network, the official Homeland Security and Safety Organization of the Jewish Federations of North America and the Conference of Presidents of Major Jewish Organizations. Prior to joining the Secure Community Network or SCN, Mr. Masters served as Senior Vice President of a strategic advisory firm that assists public and private sector organizations to address emergent, emergent threats and as the CEO of an advanced analytics company. Michael previously served as the executive director of the Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management for Cook County, Illinois, as the chief of staff for, Chicago, uh, for the Chicago Police Department as an assistant to the former mayor, Richard M. Daly. Mr. Masters has held faculty appointments at both the John Marshall School of Law and at Northeastern University, serves on, the, on a number of task forces for the United States Department of Homeland Security, 
previously served on the executive board of the FBI's Chicago Joint Terrorism Task Force and sits on the boards of a number of not-for-profit and civic organizations. A Truman and Gates Cambridge Trust Scholar, Mr. Masters received a BA from the University of Michigan, Masters in International Relationship from the Relations from the University of Cambridge, and his JD from Harvard Law School, where he served as managing editor for the Harvard International Law Journal. Certified as a sworn police a peace officer and SWAT operator, Mr. Masters serves as a captain in the United States Marine Corps. And it's my pleasure again to introduce Michael Masters. Howard, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, clearly, I should have invited my mother to have her hear that. Uh, it's always a little embarrassing, but thank you so much. It's a real pleasure to join you this evening. Uh, Hag Sameach, the board chair of the Jewish Federations of North America, recently pointed out that the lighting of candles is one of the most important parts of Jewish law, from Shabbat to Hanukkah. And for Hanukkah, we are commended to place the menorah where it can be seen, for Sumei Nisa, to publicize the miracle. With this in mind, the Lubavitcher rabbi used to bless his followers by saying, your home should become a light. Make sure you are sharing your light with others. Give your light to others. I truly believe that the work that we are discussing this evening forms part of the near tamid, the, that eternal light in securing and sustaining our communities. And that obligation is more critical now than ever before. While the COVID-19 pandemic has changed so much in our lives, disrupting our interactions and forcing us to close many of our facilities over the last nine to 10 months, it hasn't stopped those who hate us or wish us harm, as Randon pointed out. Far from driving down anti-Semitism or the likelihood of an incident or attack, conditions related to the pandemic may exacerbate them. And we've seen that in Sarasota and a couple of disturbing incidents over the last several months. That reality makes the program that you have implemented and that we are working on collaboratively in Sarasota Manatee even more timely, critical, and necessary. We will not choose the time and place of the next incident, but we can choose our preparation. And with the creation of a best practice community security program, you have chosen to prepare. You're leading the way amongst federations and Jewish communities and I'd like to thank Howard for his leadership, partnership, and friendship, as well as that of Randon. I'm looking forward at some point to being in person with all of you in Sarasota. I also want to recognize Kim Adler for her standing partnership and collaboration. And I'd also like to thank Colonel, soon to be Sheriff Hoffman, for the work that he and his team does every single day in helping to keep our community safe and secure. SCN, the official safety and security organization of the North American Jewish community, is working in partnership with federations as well as national partners to ensure that our Jewish community is as safe and secure as possible, both nationally and locally. And we're honored to work in partnership with you to implement a best practice program. That is critical right now. Last year, according to the FBI's recently released statistics, over 60% of all religiously motivated hate crimes in this country were directed at our community a 14% increase from the year before on the highest level in decades. Sadly, we know the reality of what this hate looks like when it's manifested in violence. Since October 2018, we've had four deadly attacks in our community. Over two dozen individuals have been arrested by law enforcement for plotting attacks on Jewish institutions in that same time frame. 34 mass attacks in the United States last year, and I I have to remind everyone that our institutions are targets, not just because they're Jewish institutions, but because they are community institutions, which serve Jewish and non-Jewish residents alike. The single greatest hate-related motivator of the offenders of those 34 mass attacks, anti-Semitism. As we face this pandemic, we have actually seen a rise in hate and anti-Semitism. Our partners at the FBI have arrested near record levels of domestic terrorism suspects since the beginning of 2020 and no space is safe. We've seen an uptick in cyber attacks, harassment, and crime. Working together though, we can address these threats. For those who are unfamiliar with SCN, as Howard discussed and Randon mentioned, we serve as the official safety and security organization under the Jewish Federations of North America and the Conference of Presidents. Working on behalf of 50 national partners, 146 federations, and over 300 independent communities. We're the Jewish community's official liaison with federal law enforcement, particularly the FBI and Department of Homeland Security. 
Our mission is to ensure the safety and security of the Jewish community in North America. But the goal isn't merely to guarantee the security of facilities. It's not just to preserve life, it's to grow it, to ensure that our organizations and communities can not only exist, but flourish. And with them, so too can our values, traditions, and culture for our children, grandchildren, and future generations. We are accomplishing this by developing a comprehensive, consistent best practice approach for safety and security. We're breaking down silos and we're executing that program with professionals who are dedicated to protecting the community, professionals like Jeff Solomon. And this is a necessity given the threats that we face. Events like Pittsburgh, events like Poway, Jersey City, Monsey. We have to protect these vital parts of our society, whether day schools, camps, synagogues, or senior centers, ensuring they remain open and accessible while being safe and secure. Our approach allows us to address the safety and security issues we now face, ensuring coordination within the community and with key partners, notably law enforcement, like soon to be Sheriff Hoffman, from physical threats to invisible ones like COVID-19. SCN oversees a 24 seven operations center that's staffed by a team of intelligence analysts who are tracking operational threats and security issues every day. It's what allowed us to recently identify a violent neo-Nazi making threats against the Jewish community, alert the local federation and its security director and support their work with law enforcement to track the offender. Since Pittsburgh, we've seen a 600% increase in reporting to our duty desk. We're identifying incidents and addressing threats, frequently working with law enforcement and collaborating with key partners to ensure a coordinated approach. Our duty desk also runs the nation's national mass notification system, allowing us to communicate between security professionals and with the community on everything from suspicious individuals to natural disasters. All of these things are a part of the program that we are working in partnership on. And every day, our team of intelligence, law enforcement, security, and military professionals are sharing intelligence, working with police and partners, and implementing strategic security frameworks, best practice policies and procedures, physical security, life-saving training. Each year, we're training more members of the Jewish community on safety and security issues than any other organization in the United States. This past year, in a mostly virtual environment, that's over 10,000 individuals. And the members of our team are security professionals whose full-time job is to serve the community. They're not volunteers or private contractors. Jeff is devoting 100% of his time to this community. It is this expertise, experience, and professionalism, which is a key component of your community security program. Does it make a difference? The preparation and work that went into the safety and security in the Pittsburgh community, led by that federation, saved lives and minimized injuries on October 27, 2018. Less than eight weeks before the attack in Pittsburgh, the Federation Security Director trained the members of the synagogue, training that saved lives. We heard from one of those survivors on one of our countering active threat trainings yesterday, Steve Weiss. We lost 11, but it could have been much worse. We learned from our Talmud, Ein Somhin Al Hanes. We don't rely on miracles. This isn't a time for miracles, it's a time for action. Many are acting, and you're amongst them. The security program that is being implemented in Sarasota Manatee has been designed in collaboration with federal law enforcement, Homeland Security, and through the experience of our team of experts. It was created to ensure a consistent best practice approach. And we are seeing progress in doing this across the nation. And we are fortunate to have a true professional in Jeff Solomon to head up this, expert, this effort. Just as we do with fire drills, we are going to raise the standard of safety and security across our whole community. Whether someone is walking into a Jewish day school in Palm Springs, California, or a synagogue in Sarasota, what is necessary is a best practice standardized approach. Just as Israel has an Iron Dome missile defense system, we are working to build a security shield over North American Jewish community. Our federation system is critical to it, and you are all an integral part of it. We are going to build that security shield, and we are going to do it together for our community and for our future. The COVID-19 environment presents some novel challenges. Just as we have to work to reopen our facilities, we have to recognize that they face not only long-standing threats, but new ones. Working together, we can ensure we're prepared to meet those threats. We can be. For thousands of years, our community has been under threat. But when we come together, when we work as one, we are able to not only survive those threats, but thrive. There is nothing more important that we can do than to ensure the safety and security of our community, 
its members and our future generations. And of all the things that we do, from social service to supporting overseas communities, none of it will make a difference if people out of fear choose not to walk into our community and into our organizations. We're gonna prevent that from happening by creating an empowered, resilient community. We can succeed and we will. This is a call to action and we look forward to answering it with you. And it's now my pleasure to introduce Jeff Solomon. Jeff has over 28 years of law enforcement experience to include serving as a patrol officer, crime prevention unit and community liaison officer, SWAT team member and narcotics officer. He has served as a police chief in two different agencies and has extensive experience as a consultant in the public safety sector over the last two decades. He is focused on threat assessments and providing life-saving training to communities around the country. He's advised the Secretary of Education on active shooter events and has served as an expert in our Department of Justice on targeted violence at schools. And today, and from here on out, he's gonna be leveraging that knowledge, experience, and commitment for the community in Sarasota, Manatee. Jeff? Thank you very much for the uh, introduction, Michael. And more importantly, thank you for the opportunity to serve and work in this community down here in Sarasota. Uh, having said that, there's nothing like following behind Michael in a presentation. Uh, I wanna start off by thanking the community members that showed up tonight. I sincerely appreciate you giving us your valuable time to learn about this program, learn a little bit about me and uh, where we're gonna go with things. And uh, I sincerely appreciate your time um, for yet another Zoom meeting. I'd also like to thank our Federation leadership, uh, Randon, Howard, Kim, uh, they've been absolutely amazing uh, with their leadership for the Federation and my transition into this position. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd also like to thank the Federation employees that work tirelessly behind the scenes to make this event possible. Uh, our folks that are working programs, uh, a website design, uh, and getting this up and running. Uh, I sincerely appreciate it. I'd also like to thank our special guest, Sheriff-elect Hoffman, for his uh, unwavering support of the Jewish community, of his support for me, and literally opening the doors of his agency and working closely with us with training, sharing intelligence, um, a number of things that I'm gonna talk about, but uh, thank you for that. I sincerely appreciate it. What I wanna accomplish, I have about 10 minutes or so to, to talk today, and I promised my boss who's on here that I would keep it to about 10 minutes, is I wanna accomplish, I wanna tell you a little bit more about my background. I wanna tell you what we're doing currently with the program now and where I plan on going with the program. But I think more importantly, if I was sitting in your shoes as a community member, I'd wanna know how this community security director position might interface with me and affect me out in the community. So although Michael gave my, uh, my bio, I'm gonna just go into it a little bit more because uh, Howard asked me to and he's the boss. So um, I've been in law enforcement for nearly 30 years and I recently retired as of August 1st. I worked out of uh, Sacramento, California and I've had the, the, the great and awesome opportunity to work in so many assignments that really I think are setting me up for success with this position and transitioning uh, down here to Sarasota. I've worked crime prevention, I've worked um, community-oriented policing, school resource officer, uh, I was our department's training manager, I worked in our SWAT team for nearly 10 years where I was our primary instructor. Uh, I was a, uh, Michael likes to give me, uh, rid me a little bit about my post certificates, but I was our use of force instructor, teaching chemical agents, uh, impact weapons, firearms, tactics, active shooters. I was a hostage negotiator and, um, all these things I think really put me in a unique position to come down here and serve this community. You also heard Michael talk about, I had a parallel career working in consulting, a law enforcement consultant shortly after the Columbine attacks in Colorado. I started off teaching critical incident preparedness for law enforcement agencies. And after 9-11, we quickly shifted after the need to train our civilian population. One of the things that 9-11 clearly pointed out to us was that our civilian populations are the first group of people, meaning all of you out there in our community are typically the first people to respond to any type of emergency. 
So getting out there and training in areas like active shooter response, threat and risk assessment, uh, conducting vulnerability assessments or risk assessments for your properties were all things that I were involved with. And I've had some great opportunities to work with our Department of Education and our Department of Justice in Washington, DC at uh, developing best practices for those things. Um, so having said that, I wanna talk a little bit about, so I'm trying to keep on time here, about what we're doing now with this program. Um, one of the benefits, one of the many benefits of having a program like Secure Community Network coming in is that that foundation, that infrastructure is already built. So I wasn't coming into a program having to develop something from the ground up. One of the things I did, I worked closely with our federation administration and developed a 30, 60, 90 day plan. And if you didn't know, I started September 14th. I had a few weeks of training with SCN and then really started with the Federation October 1st. Um, so I'm in my third, middle of my third month now, and I think we've pretty much wrapped up the 30, 60, 90 day plan. So really what I'm focusing on now in these three to six months is building out that infrastructure, making sure that we have uh, systems in place. As you heard Michael mention, we have the mass notification system that some of you may be a, a part of now and making sure that that's tested and up and running for the community in the event of an emergency or having to notify you of an impending emergency. Um, I'm focusing on developing relationships with our community leaders, uh, actually getting boots on the ground and going out there and meeting you uh, at the synagogues, at the Gan, at our Chabad's, um, really getting to know you as much as I can in this COVID environment. Developing a website uh, so that you have really an easy interface with my position and a phone application that hopefully will be up and running in the next month. Uh, coincidentally, our website actually was uh, released today. So uh, please go visit it and give us your thoughts. Um, we've created a, an event notification form for our community partners to be able to advise me when we're having a, uh, an event so that I can make sure that we really work closely with our law enforcement partners to make sure we have adequate security. Um, what I'm really looking at right now is continuing to um, get our security risk assessments and get our, our, our community partners in a good posture for the upcoming grant process, um, as well as making sure our uh, security community network operation center has all the information that it needs to properly uh, work closely with me and uh, the community here in Sarasota. So that's, that's kind of where we are, the, the 30,000 foot view of what we're doing now, a little snapshot. Where, where we're headed is constantly looking at ways to make this uh, uh, community safer. Right now, as I mentioned earlier, that we are getting in a position to really uh, get out there and conduct our security risk assessments. As of now, I've completed two risk assessments and written the reports, and I have eight scheduled for the next uh, five weeks um, after the holidays. So it's going to be a very busy time. So if you haven't requested that security risk assessment, please go to our website and request that. Um, so I look forward to getting out there and meeting all of you as this clears up, uh, when COVID starts to clear up a little bit. And as you heard from some of our earlier speakers that Secure Community Network provides that security shield, that protection for this community. One of the ways that we do that is through education and building resiliency in our community. Not only through all the other tools that we have, but Secure Community Network offers four primary classes. Countering Active Threats with is our uh, Active Shooter course. We've really broadened that class to incorporate all the different threats that our community and all communities face, not just firearms. Um, we have a greeter usher training program for our religious institutions, a stop the bleed training for uh, advanced hemorrhage control for civilians. One of the things that we've learned after the Sandy Hook attacks is that a lot of our victims are dying out or bleeding out on the scene and with some really simple uh, ways to get in there and stop the bleed with a little bit of training, we can make all the difference. Um, and then our last class that we offer is our situational awareness. So those are our core classes, just to name those. We also offer a host of other uh, workshops that are custom built for this organization. My goal is to be accessible to this community, accessible 
and responsive day or night. Um, one of the prior interviews, Michael made it very clear that this was not a nine to five position. Um, I really pride myself on being responsive and getting back to you and having multiple touch points for you to be able to contact me. Again, that's why we worked so hard to get our website up and running in this, uh, in, in this three months with all the resources and ways to get a hold of me, as well as the phone application, which is going to mimic our, our website. Um, we want to provide a level of comfort, not just for me being here, but the entire secure community network that's standing behind me, ready to help should we need it. Um, I look forward in the near future to get out there and meet with all of you if I haven't met you yet. Um, please contact me if you have questions. I am uh, extremely grateful and, and happy to be in this position. And just on a side note, um, I knew this was a position that I wanted to take while I was in the interview process, um, and, and Howard, I don't know if you remember this or not, it was my final interview, it was the night before, um, I, I think it was with all the Federation folks, Howard actually gave me a phone call just to check on me and see how I was doing. Um, we had a great conversation talking about uh, more about family things and whether I was nervous about the meeting the next day. Um, I immediately ran in there and told my wife that this was the community that I wanted to work for. There was no doubt in my mind. I'd never had that kind of interaction. Um, and although I moved away from California from a lot of family and friends, I have definitely found new friends and family with this community. I look forward to meeting you all and working uh, diligently for you and, and keeping you safe. With that, I will turn it back over to Kim to introduce our next speaker. Thank you so much, Jeff. And uh, I, I just can say that we are thrilled to have you in our community and thrilled to be working with you. It's really been a pleasure and, uh, and we look forward to all you're gonna be doing in the community. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, a man who I understand is wearing many hats right now, uh, Colonel and Chief Deputy Kurt Hoffman, who is also our Sheriff elect. And he was uh, kind enough to be with us tonight, and he's going to talk a little bit about uh, how he's working together with uh, with Jeff and and SDN. Thank you, Kim. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you for the invite today, and, and I, I want to echo some of the things that, that Michael's already said and that Jeff has said. Uh, but let me just tell you a little bit about myself and, and, and my background. I'm a 31 year. Uh, law enforcement veteran, uh, 23 years in law enforcement, uh, and eight years as a prosecutor here in the 12th Judicial Circuit. Uh, so I always tell people, yes, I'm a lawyer with a gun. I know that's a scary thing, but uh, it, it, they allow me to have it, uh, and I enjoy doing it. I came here at the Sheriff's Office as the General Counsel uh, about 16 years ago and was promoted uh, through the ranks from Captain, Major, uh, Chief Deputy, uh, and now I've, I've run for sheriff and, and uh, successfully won that election and I'll take office on uh, January 5th of 2021. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, National uh, FBI Academy alumni. I was a National Academy uh, graduate uh, and for Michael, I'm sure if he's a Marine, he knows where Quantico is at. I spent 10 weeks on the Marine Corps base at Quantico at the FBI Academy. Uh, one of the highlights of, of my law enforcement career and and frankly, where I, I got a lot of good information about uh, domestic terrorism and foreign terrorism and a lot of really good classes during that 10 week leadership academy um, in Quantico. I'm a member of the Joint Terrorism Task Force. I have been for the last seven years. Uh, as uh, Jeff and Michael know, you carry a secret clearance uh, when you're on the JTTF and, and we really had a good relationship with all of our law enforcement partners on the Joint Terrorism Task Force here in Sarasota County. Uh, we have several municipalities, as you know, in this community. We also have the airport police. We have a school board police. We have a college law enforcement agency. And we have several state law enforcement agencies in Sarasota County. Uh, and with a population that's over a half a million, that requires us to work together uh, and share intelligence and meet regularly. Uh, and we do that. In fact, I built that into our strategic plan as one of the goals of our agency since we are the largest law enforcement agency in Sarasota County and the sheriff by statute is the chief law enforcement officer of the county. Uh, and I think for the for your viewers, uh, I, I want them to feel comfortable in the fact 
that we work well together. Uh, most of these folks are people I've known all the way back to my days as a prosecutor that are the chiefs uh, and deputy chiefs in, in a lot of these uh, police departments. So we share intelligence very well. I monitor that probably on a weekly basis in terms of the information uh, that we are sharing. I'm also a member of the uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement's Regional Domestic Security Task Force. I have been for five years. We meet in Fort Myers. Uh, on a quarterly basis. It's been kind of a, a little off schedule with COVID being what it is, uh, but we're plugged in on that as well. And something that, um, uh, that Jeff mentioned there towards the end of, uh, of his presentation is something I think it's vitally important for your, uh, your members to know. When it comes to active shooter training, I, I think that the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office is probably on the leading edge of active shooter training. We've been doing that for uh, the 16 years that I've been here before active shooter was really, uh, you know, a popular uh, term in our, in our lexicon. Uh, we have a state of the art uh, scenario house at our gun range that we are able to do scenarios. In fact, I was down there uh, at 545 uh, AM yesterday doing a, a night shoot, actually an early morning shoot, but we do uh, daytime and nighttime, op nighttime operations in that facility and it is uh, state of the art. And I know when Jeff came over to meet with us and meet my command staff and we sat down and had a really uh, productive conversation, uh, exchanged our business cards uh, and just kind of recommitted ourselves to uh, connecting and being good partners in, in the effort to, pre, uh, to keep our community safe. One of the things that I told Jeff at that time, being a former SWAT guy, uh, we have uh, a SWAT team here at the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office that usually ranks uh, first, second or third in the state of Florida. Uh, in terms of their capabilities uh, and in terms of the, their performance uh, during the, uh, the annual SWAT competitions that they have. In fact, I, I think, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think you guys were gonna demolish a building over there and the SWAT team came over and uh, did some exercises on there. And believe me, and, and you know, Jeff, if you want something destroyed, you can just put those SWAT guys on it and they will tear it up, blow it up, burn it down, shoot it apart. And I know my SWAT commander came back and told me uh, he really appreciated uh, the Jewish community allowing them to use that building. When we can be on your campus and actually, uh, you know, have those real world kind of training scenarios, it's, it's very important for our, uh, our training staff to be able to do that. So I, I appreciate that. Uh, also just kind of wanted to touch a little bit on uh, the sharing of intelligence. Uh, you know, we exchange business cards, as I said, and, and, and Jeff and Evan and I, uh, have got each other on our, our, our cell phones. We can call each other. Uh, but as a member of the Joint Terrorism Task Force, uh, I think I have to echo what uh, Michael was saying. When you look at the threats and, and, and assess those threats, uh, at least our Joint Terrorism Task Force team, which is primarily uh, Pinellas County down to uh, Fort Myers, uh, he is correct. There, there is a higher percentage of threats uh, specifically to uh, the Jewish community, and that's unfortunate. I, in fact, I think in the entire time I've been on the Joint Terrorism Task Force, I've not gone to a single meeting without some uh, threat level in Southwest Florida, maybe not Sarasota specifically, uh, to the Jewish community. That is a unfortunate uh, and disturbing reoccurrent uh, theme when we go to the JTTF meetings. Uh, Sarasota Police Department, FBI, Secret Service, um, ATF and US Marshals. I have all of my uh, deputies are embedded in those federal agencies. So uh, I just wanna assure you that the feedback either at the JTTF level uh, or through those federal agencies uh, flows very well. And then it doesn't mean that Jeff won't get a piece of Intel or Michael won't get a piece of Intel. Uh, and that's why we've, we've partnered up so that whoever gets it, we will make sure that we are uh, all on the same page. I know I have, um, uh, I've worked with, uh, the Jewish Federation here in Sarasota County to look at some of the ingress and egress to your facilities. And I'm sure, you know, Jeff is gonna take that to a, to a whole new level, but I was uh, extremely happy to testify before a county review board uh, to hopefully, and I, I didn't actually get the answer to whether we were successful to get a variance to be able to change some of the ingress, egress out of, uh, out of some of your facilities and make them uh, more user-friendly and frankly allow emergency vehicles and, and my deputies to be able to get in and get out and, and uh, be able to uh, react to a threat should one occur on your campus. Um, 
Obviously, I want to touch too for your for your viewers on this most recent, uh, you know, despicable hate crime that we had here in Sarasota County. And Howard and I have had several conversations about this. Uh, and, and I just want you to know that uh, the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office values technology and we've got some really smart detectives. Uh, I've been doing this 31 years when cell phones were this big and I carried a pager and uh, these young guys and, and gals are, uh, are super smart. And they, they worked that for several weeks and caught that individual uh, with the help of the community with the help of social media, uh, which we both solicit and we monitor people that we know are plugged into those hate organizations. Uh, and then just good old fashioned police work. And, I, and I'll just share with you real quick. Uh, uh, we had obviously two locations where we had vandalism uh, and these detectives basically triangulated those cell towers. And once we were able to identify who we believe the person was, uh, and then through other sources, be able to develop his cell phone number. Uh, then we could start looking at those cell tower activity and see where he was at geographically, uh, putting him uh, at an ATM right near one of the crime scenes and within a block or two of, of both of the crime scenes during the period of time uh, when these crimes occur. Uh, and it, it's just really fascinating technology to be able to collate those three towers and find where does that common number appear in those three towers. Uh, and we found them close to both locations of the crime. And I think that was the linchpin that uh, allowed us to secure the probable cause to go to the judge and, uh, uh, and get the arrest warrant. And now uh, he's facing prosecution and a significant amount of uh, prison time if convicted. So I say all that to, to say, I hope you uh, uh, realize of the Sheriff's Office dedication, my dedication, uh, Sheriff Knight's dedication prior uh, to me taking this office and uh, the men and women that work here to protect uh, you in particular, but this entire community. That was the focus of my campaign. Our, our motto, if you will, was uh, commitment to community. And I think you can, words are words and uh, you know, act is an act. And, and we have been acting as diligently as we possibly can to protect uh, the Jewish community and, and all of our community. So, um, Jeff, I thank you for the partnership. I thank you for coming in and spending the time. I think we sat around for about an hour and uh, had the ability to kind of pick each other's brains. And collectively, uh, I can assure you we're doing everything we can uh, to protect you. So I also want to give a shout out uh, to everybody listening. I got a community award from the Jewish Federation last month. Uh, and really, I accept that award on behalf of all the men and women of this agency. We have over a thousand employees that go to work every day to protect this community. So thank you for that award. It's sitting behind me, if you can see over here on my, uh, on my desk. But I, I accept it on behalf of all the men and women uh, in this agency. So thank you all very much for inviting me. And uh, I'll certainly come back anytime you'd like. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Kim, you're muted. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Colonel Hoffman. We appreciate your support. And at this time, if anybody has any other questions, please go ahead and put them into the chat. We've got a few questions to get things started and uh, we'd love to hear from you. And, uh, and I'm sure anyone on the panel would be happy to answer any of your questions at this point. Um, to get things started though with the questions, I'd like to pose one to Michael. Uh, during your presentation, you talked about the SCN duty desk. Could you tell us a little bit about what that is and how that would affect us here in Sarasota? Sure, uh, thank you for the question. So the duty desk is the uh, central entity within our organization nationally uh, that is staffed by a team of intelligence analysts 24 seven. Um, I might ask my, my colleague, Mark Giardina to put the phone number uh, in uh, and, and the email address, but that really is the entity that is our operations center. Uh, and it is supporting the work that Jeff is doing and supporting the work that we're doing uh, in communities around the country, along with um, our national partners. So for instance, shortly after, uh, if we go back to October 27th of, of 2018, the offender in that incident walked into the synagogue uh, at about 9.50 in the morning. 
Within about two and a half minutes, our duty desk, uh, through a variety of tools that we have available to us and in coordination with the local security director there, was alerted to the incident. Uh, the, the event was ongoing at that point. I mean, the, the offender was still actively uh, in the building. And we were able to send out a notification, a mass notification within uh, several minutes to the leadership, the Federation leadership, uh, as well as Jewish communities around the country to let them know about what, that, what was going on. That duty desk was also coordinating uh, with FBI headquarters and the Department of Homeland Security. And of course, helping the local security director who was responding to the incident uh, in his coordination with state, local and federal law enforcement. So that, that is really a nerve center for us. Um, it's where individuals and organizations uh, report incidents, suspicious activity, or ongoing events. Uh, and of course, Jeff is your, your main point of contact in Sarasota and Manatee, and he'll work closely with that team and they'll, they'll run anything down that needs to be. Excellent, thank you so much for that. Uh, we have a question that's just come in. Uh, do we have a place, do we have, do we have in place a central station monitoring program? I'm not sure if that's, yeah, Jeff, you wanna take that one? Yeah, so I mean, that, that can mean a couple of different things. Um, so, you know, what Michael just spoke to was our operations center or our duty desk, which is where we actually is our operating center and where we, we monitor, we're preventative and reactionary. Um, so that's one component. The other component is a central reporting system out of Sarasota Manatee. Um, up on our website at the very top, there's a big red tab uh, to report an incident. We want to not only uh, have you let your local law enforcement know if you're involved in any kind of suspicious activities or uh, anti-Semitic attacks, but to also let us know so that we can track this and make sure that you're getting the assistance that you need. I'm gonna just real quickly, since you referred to it a couple times, Jeff, I'm just gonna share what our website uh, looks like. I have it up on my screen. And just to reiterate what Jeff was saying, we've got these buttons here where you can click to, uh, to report an incident. Uh, click right on it, takes you to a, to a form that opens right up. Okay. And I get that email to me immediately once that is filled out so that I can track it and make sure that it gets to our operations center and uh, even law enforcement if I need to. Um, it's been extremely helpful to be able to track these incidents that are occurring in our county. Excellent. Um, I've got another question and this could go um, to, to you, Jeff, or maybe even to Michael as well. Um, the average age of 90% of our uh, of, of people in our community are, is over 65, uh, or I'm sorry, this was, this is about a particular synagogue, I believe, um, that, you know, average age is over, uh, over 65. What type of training is available for this population with regard to security and preparedness? Jeff, let me, let me take a, an initial broad statement, then I'm going to let you dive into the specifics, because I want to make one, you know, one point and I've referenced Tree of Life several times. We took a lot of uh, survivor testimony after Tree of Life. And a number of the individuals, and I'm, I'm thinking of one in particular, we actually feature the video in our, our Countering Active Threat Training, 92 years old. Uh, and he, he emphasizes in the training that he knew that he needed to move. He had to commit to action, which is what we teach in the training. It doesn't matter if someone's five years old or 95 years old. He was able to get out, made it outside of the synagogue and survive that event. Uh, that was the option that was available to him was to get up and move. And so we really want to stress to people that you have to commit to action. We're going to give you the tools. Jeff is going to go through the training. He's going to coordinate uh, with the sheriff elect and his folks so that everything is synchronized in what we're teaching and what we're, what we're training on and so that everybody has an idea that is complementary to one another. But the key is to commit to action. And that might be to run. It might be to, to shelter in place or to hide in an effective manner. It might be to fight, depending on the circumstance. Uh, but we're going to give you those tools. I just really want to stress to people, and I say this with my grand, you know, grandmother's 92 years old. She's been through the course. You commit to action, and you can work to survive. Jeff? Yeah, thank you, Michael. Uh, you know, you, you really did hit 
hit the major points with this. But what I'll stress is besides our uh, countering active threats is that we have a situational awareness class that really speaks to getting uh, your mindset right. Uh, Michael referenced commit to action. What we know in critical incidents is what most people believe happens is that people panic. There's actually a, a formula for panic. And what we typically don't see in an incident like uh, an active shooter event or an attack is panic. We see the opposite of panic. What, what is the opposite of panic? It's doing nothing. Um, it's laying down on the ground and doing what you learned in grade school, which is covering your head, um, you know, preparing like we do in California, getting underneath the desk for an earthquake, those types of things. Um, not committing to action, not moving your body, not moving away from the threat. So really training us to be proactive when these things happen. I've watched countless videos of attacks where people simply just sat on the ground next to a shooter because they didn't have their mind trained on what they needed to do. So what we train that population or any population or age group is to have a plan, to be thinking about things in advance. Um, you know, there's a famous quote by uh, a survivor of uh, active shooter events, Christina Anderson from Virginia Tech, and says, live safe, not scared. Um, and that's exactly where I want people to be. I want you to put a little thought into this ahead of time. Go to our training, our situational awareness, our um, countering active threats training, and having that edge so that you're ahead of the curve with this. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff and Michael. Uh, another question that's come in is uh, about organizations that that we're collaborating with from a from a security or anti-Semitism perspective. Um, and in particular, are we collaborating with ADL? So maybe again, Jeff and or Michael could talk about who we collaborate with both locally and nationally. I can, uh, I, Michael can speak to what we're doing nationally with ADL because I know that we have some, some movement with that. Um, locally here, I've, I've spoken to two officials and I'm sorry, I'm spacing their, their job titles um, and their, their names, but uh, two high level regional uh, officers with ADL, um, you know, where we shared information, got on Zoom. That was my first month here. I really wanted to establish a, a connection, learning what they're doing. They wanted to learn what I'm doing here. And, and more importantly, just having that open line of communication. In fact, I just got an email from her today. So um, yes, we are uh, in contact with ADL. We are meeting with them and we're moving forward with that. Michael, do you have anything to add to that national level? Sure, uh, let, me, let me speak nationally. Um, and I wanna recognize, I, I took this job three years ago uh, this December and there was very little coordination that occurred at the national level. And I wanna recognize that a very strong and robust partnership has existed uh, thanks to the leadership uh, at ADL, Jonathan Greenblatt, as well as with their senior vice president, uh, George Salim. We are in near coordination, uh, near contact every single day. Uh, our duty desk that I mentioned coordinates uh, on a regular basis with the ADL's National Center on Extremism. When the attack and uh, when the events in Charlottesville, Virginia happened, the teams were trading intelligence and information about the offenders uh, by within the hour and then coordinating together on the information that we were sending to law enforcement so that we weren't creating duplication for our law enforcement partners that were trying to handle the situation on the ground. Uh, Pittsburgh, Poway. And so we, we have really developed a very robust information and intelligence sharing effort. We've more clearly established, we're focused on the security and safety. Um, and ADL has tremendous resources in their education components and their training components that we work to be complementary to as they do to us in the security program. And I think, you know, the last thing that we need is division uh, and confusion when it comes to physical security in our community. We're working really hard with our national partners to make sure that that doesn't exist. Excellent, thank you. Um, another question that's come in is with regard to college campuses and uh, what we what we may be doing on any of the local college campuses. Is that something you've had a chance to tackle yet, Jeff? Well, I, I can say this, and then again, I'll have to pass it off to, uh, to Michael to get uh, a little bit more in depth with our, our LLs. But, um, you know, I'm in my middle of my third month here, and I have not had the opportunity to reach out to some of our local colleges. But we actually do have a new uh, uh, person in that position, and I'll let Michael expand on that a little bit. Sure. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. So three now in 20, 2016, and as we saw a rise, not just in anti-Semitism, 
but physical assaults, vandalization, and harassment of Jewish students on campuses. We worked with the Jewish Federations of North America, our great partner, uh, AEPI, Chabad on Campus, and Hillel International to create a campus security initiative. That campus security initiative has visited dozens of campuses around the country every year, uh, responded to literally thousands of events. Uh, the reason we we were in Charlottesville within 12 hours of the first Unite the Right rally was because of the AEPI and the Hillel that were on the UVA campus, right where that Tiki Torch rally happened. And we've deployed across the country. Um, we're enhancing that program. So just several weeks ago, now, now two months ago, uh, we worked with Hillel International to staff, just like you have in Sarasota Manatee with Jeff, an actual director of safety and security specifically for Hillel, uh, John Steeman, member of our team. And so that increases the coordination so that Jeff and, and John and our larger campus security initiative can be working on those campuses and those campus organizations that are such a critical part of Jewish life uh, in, in your area. Excellent. Um, so one question I have uh, that, that I think is an interesting one for Jeff is, you're only one person, Jeff. You're a one-man show here in Sarasota Manatee. And uh, we've got a question about how are you going to be able to get all of this done being just one person? Well, um, that's a great question. Uh, Howard has me working here. So, um, yeah, so here's the thing. It really isn't one person. Um, I, I think the name, you know, really goes to the organization, Secure Community Network. We are a network of professionals throughout the United States, and I have the support of that network, not only through our operations center, but by um, other experienced operators and uh, uh, folks, whether they served in the military, um, whether they served in law enforcement, security professionals. I have a lot of other people to draw from in this organization. I think one of the things that has helped me from day one is to establish relationships with local law enforcement. So again, it's not me reaching out and really getting that force multiplier of meeting the sheriff. Um, I met with the chief of police of Sarasota um, and really getting to know what our, our capabilities are and how we can best utilize and work with one another. So again, this really isn't just me. This is a whole team of people in an operations center based out of uh, Chicago and a network of law enforcement professionals, as well as the close ties with law enforcement locally and nationally. Um, I personally have attended a number of the Joint Terrorism Task Force meetings and actually driven around with one of our local FBI agents um, to kind of get a lay of the land and uh, really kind of understand what the th threat matrix here in Sarasota area is. Excellent. Okay, I think that's our I think that's our last question. Um, I do want to make a, a plug for that website that, that Jeff talked about, and um, I'm going to put it back up on the screen one more time and give you guys the URL so you know how to access it. It is jfedsrq.org slash srqsafe. You can see it up here, and uh, we'll send it out to you also in a follow-up email. And it's, again, it's, this is really what's created for you guys here in the community. It's a way to connect with Jeff. It's a way to connect with the Secure Community Network. It's a way to report an incident that you may have seen. Um, and, you know, there's lots and lots of resources on here. Jeff worked very closely with his contacts at SCN and with our internal, uh, with our internal web designer to make this a really robust page for you. I hope you'll have an opportunity to check it out and to use it. Um, I hope you don't need to use it, but I hope you'll check it out and be prepared, um, you know, in the event that you need this information. So does anybody want to make any final remarks before we close for the evening? Yeah, I'd like to close it out by thanking everybody for being on today. Obviously, thanking all the panelists for being here, but I really want to thank each of you for being on here today. Um, Jeff works directly with a, a committee at Federation that represents all of our synagogues, all of our Jewish agencies, as well as other organizations. Um, again, if you are part of a synagogue or a Jewish agency and you would like Jeff to come out and do an assessment, please contact him directly on the website Kim just provided. Um, I personally want to thank Michael for allowing us to be part of your network. 
I um, want to thank Jeff for coming here. I want to thank uh, Sheriff-elect um, Kurt Hoffman for being here with us tonight. And I want to thank all of you. And, and especially, I really want to thank Randon and the Federation leadership for really having the foresight to invest in this. I think you can all agree that it's better to be safe than um, looking back and wish you'd done something. And I think what Michael talked about and happened in Pittsburgh, thank God they were prepared and thank God we will be as well. So thanks to each one of you for being here tonight and hopefully look forward to a really good 2021. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank thanks you. to all of our panelists and thanks to everyone for participating tonight. Have a great evening and a, and a wonderful last night of Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah, everybody.